Hello, it's a really warm, hot, sunny day in September. It might turn out to be the warmest slash hottest day of the year. We will see. Uh, I'm at Bristol Parkway Station. Uh, we're doing another Least Use Station video, but to get there, I've got to get a taxi. Thank you. One sprinter taxi ride later, I've made it to our location for the day. And I say Al, because uh, my guest is, uh, I, I dread to think how long you've been standing here. <laughs> this is Ed. Ed, what's going on? We're doing the least used station in Gloucestershire. It's Pilney. <laughs> My jacket. I don't know why. Did you bring water? Yes. It's really warm. Can you see the sun? It's so hot. I met you before we, at Pilning. We have been at Pilning before together. Yes, back in, in 2017. And the Cultural Railway Project 2017. Precisely. Um, you worked as I was a camera operator then at ITV. And you came and made a video. That's right. When, when I was here at visiting Pilning. Because you're from. I'm from Gloucestershire, so yeah, I'm a local boy. So it made sense. And you have all the knowledge. He's brought like multiple fact sheets. <laughs> You're even wearing an old HCV West t-shirt. I, yeah. I but mean, you're going to change t-shirt, aren't I you? I will. Into something more... Slightly more appropriate. Appropriate. Was that a 158? Uh, yes. Are we going to get a 158? I think we are, yeah. It's a Portsmouth service and it should be The train be this morning was at what time, Ed? Uh, 8.33. And the one we're getting is the... Is the 15.58. So there's only two trains a day. Two trains a day. On a Saturday. Both on a Saturday. Both going in that direction. Here's the timetable poster. 8.33. Uh, seven means 8.52, and then the 50, well, it says here it's 15.32, but we think it's 15.58. Yeah. Is this tied up a poster out of date? I think it's wrong, yeah. I think it's wrong as well, GWR. We need to check what time our train is at. Please wait. Are you waiting, Ed? I am waiting. Are you waiting? Are you, pl are you please waiting? I am please waiting. Ed, does this station have a help point? <laughs> please wait. I think it does, yeah, Jeff. Does it have a dot matrix? It does not have a dot matrix. Does it have a shelter? It does have a shelter. Does it have a ticket Please machine? Please wait. It does not have a ticket machine, no. Does it have a little cafe? <laughs> it does not have a cafe, no. It does, the, have a, uh... it does have a bin. How can I assist you, sir? Uh, could you tell me the time of the next train from Pilning, please? Pilning to which station do you wish to travel, sir? Uh, Bristol Temple Meads, please. So if I can check, it is uh, 2.21 right now, and the next service will depart Pilning at uh, 15.58 from platform number one. Thank you very much. So 15.58. 15.58 is From platform one. Ed, whatever you do, make sure you get the right platform. Yeah, I, <laughs> you know, it's so difficult, isn't it? You know, with two platforms to choose from, but no way of getting to the other one. Well, that sounds like a good... Where's your t-shirt? This, ah, this sounds like a good time. It does sound like a good cue to talk that, about. I, I think so. The footbridge. Pilning famously lost its footbridge in what year? In 2016. It was fireworks night 2016 when they took it down. Were you here? I was not here then, no. But no. you were aware of Pilning's least use status at that Absolutely. stage? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Had you used yeah. Pilning before then? The last time I was here, before coming to see you here, right. was probably the early 90s. Okay when I probably would have come here train spotting to be honest with you. Pilding famously lost its footbridge because of the electrification. Yeah. It had to come down. It lost its westbound service. It did. Pilding for a minute. When we get your fact sheet in a minute, he's got a brilliant fact sheet. <laughs> uh, we'll learn about Pilding Station Group who have very been very active even since Absolutely. the Danes. Over. I can see the plaque from here, the gentleman called In Memory of Jonathan King. There's a beautiful little yeah. plaque in the shelter. He was the initial campaigner to be like, get more for trains many, Pilding. many years. It's yeah. then carried on through the Pilding Station Group, yeah. links below. But yeah, so Footbridge for Pilning. Have you got me a t-shirt? Oh, Jeff, sorry, no, they're, <laughs> out, they're out of your size. <laughs> Welcome to the greenhouse <laughs> that is the waiting shelter. It's pretty warm in here. It's a warm day. Let me be the first to um, avoid pedantry corner. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I am well aware that uh, Pilning is now in the Unitary Authority of South Gloucestershire. It is, yes. But this entire series, which I started in 2016? 
Um, I've been doing least used by traditional ceremonial counties. Yeah. So this was traditionally in Gloucestershire, but it I'm was, well aware yeah. now that it's technically south. You'll have people in the comments I'm saying, yeah, I'm yeah. Just, but, I'm it, but it is. It's, okay. it's traditionally Gloucestershire, so. Uh, I know I get you to talk about all the challenges in Pilning Station Group and stuff, so yeah. let me just see if I can get this right, because okay. I want to do the condensed history of Pilning in like 20 seconds. All right, go for it. There was a line that went to a ferry, and there was an old Pilning Station just over there, then they got the main line with the tunnel, yep. and so the new one came into existence, and they closed that one. That's exactly but then they built a freight line that linked up the Seven Bridge, Seven Beach, lot, Seven Beach sorry, bit to that yeah. bit, and they reinstated Pilning Station there. So here, Pilning Low Level, and this was Pilning High, high Level. level yeah. There used to be two Pilning stations. That's an incredible thing. And then that sort of that's been taken away. Is that rough, roughly it? That's pretty much. But exactly just the fact it. that there were two Pilning stations, I know, is is quite. And to, and to be reduced to this, <laughs> from two stations to. Two trains a day. How Saturday. the mighty have fallen. Right, yeah. And you've brought all these amazing <laughs> fact sheets. Right. Mm. They're not laminated, though, Ed. No, I know. I didn't quite get round to that. Sorry. But you've done a lot, of, a lot of research without me even asking. In this, this is my favourite one. I'll do a cutaway. It's all right. How the figures over the years, around 2016-17, then shot up. Yeah. And this is predominantly due to Pilming Station Group. Absolutely. And their it, amazing efforts that they did to promote the station. Exactly. So it was around that time, obviously, they lost the footbridge. Yeah. And to encourage people to use the station and show just what an asset it is to the local community. Yeah. You know, they, they put so much effort into trying to encourage people to come and do challenges. And the, the first challenge was, was it was the leave on the first train and come back on the second train yeah. and see how far you could go. It was use as many train operators as you possibly could. Now you did that, didn't you? I did, I did it seven times. <laughs> Bit of drama at the last minute. Over oh, short station. Have to go back. And we're back after that last minute drama. Filming Grand Slam complete. Tick. So where are so, we at now for the 21-2 period? So for 2021 to 2, there were 418. Didn't let me do my oh, thigh-slapping drum roll. Go on, you said it now. 418 entries and exits. Sure. Which equates to 1.15 passengers per day. Did you learn that? I... Did you just do that in your head? I have it written there. Oh, it is on the sheet, yeah. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Obviously, it only gets a service one day a week, so... You know, it's it's kind of more meaningful to try and work it out by. Like... There goes the GoPro. <laughs> I think we're recovered. Hi, GoPro. It's roughly four point one passengers per scheduled service. But I will link to Building Station Group. They have a website. They have a fantastic website. They have, you, they have their own so YouTube channel. So, there's so much on there. Go and have a look at it. Really do. And also, they did a song, didn't they? They did John Lennon's Imagine, Imagine Pilning Station. Imagine Pilning Station Still had a platform to Do you want to get out of the greenhouse? It's a little bit warm. Oh, it is a bit warm, isn't it? Uh, whilst we escape the greenhouse, I didn't tell you this, but uh, this video can be sponsored by Train Pals. Oh. So the next minute is about a smarter way to buy your train tickets. Yes, this video is sponsored by Train Pal, the handy app which you can use to buy and download all your tickets, e-tickets and rail cards as well on one handy app. And they do the classic thing where it'll do split tickets, a couple of singles split somewhere along the way to get you the cheapest possible journey. And they also offer you vouchers, that's on screen now. If you use my one, my name, my code in the voucher, then you'll get some discounts that way as well. And buying a rail card which gives you discount off of fares anyway normally costs around £30. But if you buy it through the Train Pal app, you get about a third off so you get the rail card even cheaper to get great discounts. And here's the best deal ever with TrainPal. Whether you bought your rail card from TrainPal or not, you could upgrade it for zero pounds using my code Jeff77, like this. In the vouchers and promo code area, type this code in and you can upgrade your rail card for free. So thanks to TrainPal for sponsoring this video. There is a link in the description. Go click, download, get my vouchers too, which are on screen, and that'll give you even more discounts. I used it to spend the whole weekend in Bristol. I uh, didn't just go to Pilning, went to some other places as well, tick off stations which I hadn't actually sort of got out or explored properly, which I've now done, which is great. So last time I was here, 2017, kind of came through in a hurry. Since 2017, I've learned so much more about Pilner. Oh, there is so much to know about Pilner. It's My history. Goodness. Well, one thing we can focus on right now is what we're standing on 
right now. Well, this is the motor rail ramp. The what? The motor rail ramp. <laughs> From a time point. when building had what? It had a service where you could drive your car onto a train and it would take you through the Seven Tunnel. That's amazing. Yeah. Is this before the bridges were built? It is. So this was in the sort of 40 years or so before the Seven Bridge uh, first opened. And th th you've got all the dates on your, on your fact sheet. So, so this, there's an actual... This is actually... The a conveyance of motor cars and motorcycles through the Seven Tunnels. So you would, you would drive your car up, up here, up here, up here, <laughs> and on. At Pilning. I'm in the car park, by the way. I, I don't want to, I'm going to stand this side. I don't want to focus heavily on it too much because there is some unfortunate uh, fly tipping that goes on here. But it's just amusing that the National Rail page says, what, 10, 11 parking spaces, but there's no painted lines. You could fit probably like 20, 30 cars into this, into this area. So I've just driven my car off the uh, motion. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll try and work out exactly how many cars you could. You could, you could fit many, uh, take an estimate. Ed, how many cars could you fit in the Pilning Station car park? 25? I, I think so. Okay. Grab the camera here. We come to the end of the platform. Note how there's no yellow line along, no. along the edge. But there is here a brilliant sign that says, "Anyone caught stealing signage will be prosecuted." Why, why would you? You'd have a sign telling I, you not to steal signs. I have no idea why that's there, and I've never seen it anywhere else. And there's one back here as well saying, "Oh yeah, don't carry fishing rods or helium balloons <laughs> or selfie sticks or selfie sticks because it's yeah. like selfie sticks near overhead near, lines. Uh, near the overhead lines." <laughs> Pilning Station Group have just texted me. <laughs> of course they have. <laughs> Could I check the number of people boarding the train? Uh, well, including us, it's five. Do they keep stats then? Do they keep oh, like, yeah, their they, they're, they're, they're very hot on keeping stats of how many passengers they get because you never know how the ORR kind of estimates their. Hang on, so 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 Pilning Station Group get their own stats, which they then compare to the ORR stats. Exactly. So yeah. they can say oh, actually, well, so, actually so, sort of like an actually I think yeah, confined actually, moment. We had this many passengers. Okay. <laughs> I've met the driver of the train before. His name's Rob. So we met him in 2017. Pretty sure we were on a Weymouth train. I've uh, met him before. Uh, he's sort of, he's, hi Rob. <laughs> so he might give us a toot as he comes in. Apparently it's a four car 158. You don't want to do like your best PA Tannoy voice. Be like the next train at platform one. The next train at platform one <laughs> is the 1558 Great Western Railway Service to, to Portsmouth Harbour. Stopping at where? <laughs> no, you don't. I can't you don't have to do it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> hey. uh, thanks to Train Power for sponsoring the video. Use them to buy all your tickets. Ed, thank you. Thanks, man. So warm, but this 158 has working air conditioning, so we're about to pull down. What do you want to tell YouTube? Quick, hit subscribe, hit the bell, all that, all that good stuff. Watch all the other videos in the least you've yeah, played. Absolutely. See you again. Thank you. Bye. Bye.